Further debate. I recognize the member for Oshawa. Thank you very much, Speaker, and I appreciate the opportunity to stand today and speak on Bill 100, um, an act to enact legislation to protect access to certain transportation infrastructure. Um, I think its uh, short title is Keeping Ontario Open for Business Act 2022. And I'm glad to, um, I'm glad to continue the conversation that we have been having this past week uh, on, on this topic about international trade, on industry, on manufacturing, on the importance of, of uh, keeping goods moving, on the impact of the automotive sector, on the province. Um, certainly, Speaker, I know it intimately well uh, as, as being the member for Oshawa um, and recognizing the, not just the importance of a thriving and solid automotive sector on a community, um, but the, the heart of it. Uh, we can talk about the dollars and cents, and I'm glad to. I'm glad to talk about the contribution that the auto sector makes, that the automotive workers uh, make across our community, whether that's in their donations to the United Way or just rolling up their sleeves and being involved in just about everything I, can, uh, I could name in our community through the years. Um, but this is, this is a, a sector that deserves respect. It's a sector that deserves support. Um, and I, I am glad to be able to stand and um, provide an alternative version to the revisionist history that we've been hearing the past few, uh, past few days. So my version of events when it comes to the, the automotive sector uh, and my version of, of things is through that Oshawa lens, that local lens, and takes us back in time um, to 2018, if any of us remember that far back. But to me, it was like it was yesterday. And to many of the workers in Oshawa, it was indeed like it was yesterday. Um, so, Speaker, what has been happening in the, in, the converse, in the room is there has been a lot of um, celebration about investment. And I support and celebrate investment. And I'm very grateful for it. Um, what I take issue with has been the self-congratulatory uh, tone of the government, that it has been about the government uh, and the work that they have done as opposed to the work of those on the shop floor, the, the work of the um, collective bargaining teams of the local leadership. You know, the, the folks at Unifor 222 in Oshawa uh, never gave up, and I never gave up alongside them. Um, in fact, I remember, though, standing in this House and asking the Premier, um, asking the Premier why he was so quick to give up on the folks in Oshawa. Um, and this was, this was in response to the fact that the Premier had said that politicians uh, and union leaders were selling false hope. And, Speaker, <laughs> This was on the heels of the, of, you know, of, of the announcement that GM was, or of the knowledge that GM was going to be abandoning Oshawa at that time and, and the fear of that. And I remember getting the news in the middle of the night, and it wasn't quite news yet, it was rumors. And so many of us went down to the plant in the middle of the night, the media was there. And I remember saying, uh, standing there and saying, I hope that the Premier, you know, rallies and that the Prime Minister comes to our defense. And I thought I was being maybe a little bit over the top at the time. You know, I thought, well, of course they would. Of course they would. And they didn't. In fact, it was this Premier who said the ship has left the dock and kind of, you know, tapped out before even getting into the ring. Like, the, the, oh, the fight was over. And, and he, you know, let us know many times that he'd spoken to everybody on his cell phone and had spoken to, you know, the, the, President of GM and had been assured that it was over, and I, here I was running around selling false hope. I was running around, and I was talking to a lot of folks, hugging a lot of people back when we could hug people. Um, and, and I would never sell false hope, but I would never give up hope. And I'm awfully glad I didn't, because as it turns out, we were right. There was a reason to not count Oshawa out, right? And that was because of the, the, the bargaining teams. That was because of the local leadership. That was because of the heart of the workers. Um, you know, and I'm just going to take us back in time because it's fun. it's fun. It's fun to go back and actually look at the words that were really said in here because everybody sort of forgets them. Um, and the, I asked the government on behalf of Michelle. Michelle had said, Jennifer, thank you for standing up with us, standing with us in this fight. I'm a second generation auto worker. 
I was born and raised in Oshawa. General Motors raised me. It paid for all my birthdays, extracurricular activities, medicine when I was sick, dental, food, school, and the roof over my head. She keeps going on to say, I hurt so badly inside thinking about what I will face in this next year. I hurt because we currently have a Premier who doesn't care about me or my family or General Motors having a manufacturing presence in Canada. Why does my government not care about me and my family? Remember, Speaker, that Michelle, my constituent, was heckled in the response? I do. That still burns our community. Um, and the, the Premier responded with, what is the NDP doing? I'll tell you what they're doing, Mr. Speaker. They're doing nothing, zero. As you're sitting there running around talking, we're out there creating new jobs. Okay. I was running around talking. And I was also standing alongside my community because I believe that Oshawa is worth fighting for. Um, and I didn't understand why the government had no hope turn tail, so to speak. Um, and I'm, I'm taking us back at that point um, because one should never count out, you know, a community that is, is providing, a, that is building something with the future in mind. And this government has learned that, right? Like they, they said enough, forget it, you know, it's, it's over, it's done with, you know, the GM said it's done, therefore it's done, because they didn't understand how the working world works. They didn't understand the power of the union or the power of the people. And I, I, I mean, it's fun to hear the government now suggest that they were, they sort of knew all along. No, they didn't. They were ripping out charging stations back when the big automotive folks were saying, you know, the future is electric. They were ripping out the charging stations. Well, now it's like they got that little sort of tip that there's going to be new investment in Brampton, which that's, you know, all of this is good news. Like, we, we love investment, especially in a town like mine or, or in a place like Windsor, which is, you know, what we've been talking about the last couple of days. Um, we know what that means to folks, to the parts suppliers, to the auto workers, uh, to the broader community. We want that investment, but we want, we want the folks who do the building, the folks who do the, the heavy lifting. We want them to get the credit there too, eh? Just a, a polite reminder of the government to, you know, maybe have some humility um, and recognize that that uh, there's a lot, a lot to the sector, um, and it has to do with the people. Um, speaking of those people, in Windsor, Speaker, um, the illegal blockade wreaked havoc and was horrible for the folks there. And it was the automotive sector, um, you know, the auto manufacturing plants were forced to send workers home without pay, and there were cancelled shifts. Things were, were in a mess. Um, the small businesses, the workers without their wages, um, and they're still in turmoil. Uh, and I applaud my colleague, the member from Windsor West, who gave an hour speech about uh, the importance of investing in community um, and a way that this government could do that on the heels of this illegal blockade that just, yes, the economics um, of it were significant and, and terrible, but also the human experience of it, um, this government would do well uh, to recognize that in more than just this piece of legislation, but take it that next step and expand the support program for small businesses to include those in Windsor-Essex. Um, you know, they're, they're an auto town, they're, well, they're like Oshawa, they're not just an auto town, they're, <laughs> they're, they're a, um, you know, a, a, a booming community. Um, all interconnected, and a lot of people are hurting right now. So I would encourage this government to take a closer look at the uh, people side of things. Um, we know it's an international uh, hub. We understand that the blockade at the Ambassador Bridge was awful for people in the economy, but what we do next um, is an important part of their story, an important um, opportunity for this government to show leadership. Um, and. Uh, I remember their role. I mean, the, the clock's ticking. They won't get to be government for too much longer, but they could leave a couple of legacy pieces. This is a perfect example. Um, so, again, I, I would challenge the government in that regard. Uh, and one more thing I'll say is I have just a couple of seconds left on the clock. This government would do well to remember, as folks across Ontario do well to remember, not ever to count out a worker, not ever to count out uh, the folks in the labour movement and those who are doing the heavy lifting and are on the shop floors across the province, um, building and making and doing, um, they really are the ones that make us strong and we would do better to support them in real ways. Uh, and so, Speaker, with that reminder, I never lost hope and never lost faith in the folks in Oshawa. I'm awfully glad because here we have a next chapter and as we're talking about Windsor, let's ensure that they do as well. Thank you, Speaker.
Thank you very much. Questions? The member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'll tell you, this government and this Minister of Labour, Training and Skills Development has done more for workers than probably any government in history. And I applaud the work that uh, he has done to put our workers first. Uh, you, we heard a lot uh, from you today, uh, sorry, from the member opposite through you, Mr. Speaker, about the effects on the automotive industry, which is extremely important. And once again, our, our Minister of Economic Development has done a lot, and our Premier, of course, to bring back the automo automotive industry here in, in Ontario. And you know, we have to, talk, to also talk about the good paying jobs that the unions, uh, uh, union jobs that are put at risk. We're put at risk over this, uh, this uh, border issue. Uh, so I guess my question over to the member opposite is, do you feel that this legislation uh, can assist in the future projects uh, to make sure that those paying jobs, those good paying union jobs are, are not affected in the future by having this legislation in place? And, uh, and my second question is, will you support this legislation to support workers? Member for Oshawa. Speaker, I always support workers, um, and, and actually not just on the floor of this house and not just in my words, um, having, having been a a union member um, and one who, as we're talking about protests, um, who's organized more than a few. Um, I absolutely uh, will stand alongside them and, and will stand up for their, um, you know, their, their rights to protest, but their rights to have good union paying jobs. Um, I'll say, interestingly, the more people that we talk to about good paying jobs, um, yes, that's the goal, but they also need to be enough to pay their bills. And um, more and more, Speaker, unfortunately, even uh, union jobs aren't, aren't uh, enough to pay the bills right now. So this government, with all of its other decisions, is making life so much harder for folks. So is this a, a piece that's going to help us hopefully uh, keep a strong relationship at our international borders? I hope so. Um, but there's a lot of other stuff. You know, the, the, the Premier talked about hydro rates back in the day, well, they don't seem to care the same way now, still, you know, still a problem. Fine. There are a lot of other uh, initiatives I hope that the government will, um, will take or follow through on to make uh, life easier for workers and families. Thank you. Next we have the member for Halib, oh sorry, York Southwest. Thank you, sir. Uh, and, and thank you to my colleague from Oshawa for um, an excellent uh, presentation uh, this afternoon. And um, I know that uh, the folks from Oshawa have been struggling, and they have been struggling because of the uh, lack of investment of this uh, um, uh, government. And I know that you talked about uh, in your speech about uh, the importance of investing uh, municipalities such as Oshawa and Windsor, places like that, to bring also the outer industry. Um, why is this government is not investing in communities? Mr. Oshawa. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to acknowledge that there's a lot of money coming to the automotive sector, and we, we applaud that. We're grateful for it. I think what the member is, is asking me about, though, is that investing and believing in communities and, and kind of looking at that big picture. We've seen this government uh, turn its back on, on money, you know, like from the 407, uh, the, the penalty fees, and just sort of like, you know, who cares? <laughs> What's a billion dollars? Um, but the, and they'll they'll set money on fire for for pet projects and things like that. So, I, what I'd like to see them do is not just invest in communities, but work with communities to find out what it is that they actually need, not just what they're told. You know, at, at a golf tournament or a you know a, a fancy dinner. You know, their friends that might tell them what it is that they would like them to invest in. I want that investment to actually reflect the needs of of growing communities, like like in Durham region, um, and. Response. And I guess I'd like it to uh, to be quite purposeful and, and community-based. Thank you. The member for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, and I want to make some comments to the member from Oshawa about uh, what the progressive conservative government has done for the people of Oshawa, not only in the auto industry, but in the Minister of Labour, Training uh, and Skills Development, with the investments they have made to increase the skills of people in Oshawa and across the province so they can get those jobs that we, as a progressive conservative government, have brought to this province in the billions of dollars just in electrical, electric vehicle manufacturing that's going to come, the partnerships that have been developed. But even before that, when the member was um, in opposition and when the Liberal government was in power, 
They were taxing the businesses of Ontario. They were driving out the manufacturing sector. Since we have been in government, we have decreased by $7 billion the cost of doing business Question. in the province of Ontario. So I would ask the member opposite, bills like this 100 that we have in front of us that will increase the trade across the borders, would she not support this for the auto workers that are here now and are going to come to her city of Oshawa? Member for Oshawa to respond. <laughs> Speaker, I'm, I'm going to say something that uh, I, I the member opposite, I kind of miss her as the Minister of Infrastructure. Um, I appreciate her, uh, her comments, uh, and I appreciate that, um, that she has been keeping track of what's going on in the Durham region. Um, me too, and I'd like to see uh, more. But I am going to tap into her former expertise as the Minister for Infrastructure because you're wanting me to uh, support this bill, which you know, remains to be seen. However, the definition of public infrastructure in this act is concerningly broad, and I'd love to know um, what what it actually will look like. Because you know, we're talking about airports, border crossings, are one thing, but it's giving the government powers to uh, you know to decide that to designate any infrastructure site as, as covered in the act. Um, and we just, no offense, I don't trust the government because. You know, this this member can can cite some positives. I will give her that. Response. Um, but I could cite probably a few more negatives, and so I don't have trust in this government. So I'm sorry we can't have more of a back and forth. Um, but yes, thank you. That's my comment. The member for London North Centre. I'd like to thank the member from Oshawa for her kind words about what auto workers bring to their communities. My grandfather himself was an auto worker <clears throat> in Ford Talbotville, and because of that work, my mother was able to receive a scholarship and attended university and changed the trajectory of her life. I remember uh, comments at the time with the Premier giving up on Oshawa and how the member from Oshawa said that he had folded like a cheap suit because he refuted to, refuses to stand up for auto workers. So I'd like to ask <clears throat> the member, do, does she think that this government would like the people of Oshawa to forget that uh, the government did not stand up for them in 2018 or would, do they hope that all of Ontario will forget? Member for Oshawa. Thank you so much for asking. And yeah, I, for, I said a couple things back then, um, and a lot of it was quite emotionally motivated because it was unfolding um, real time. Uh, he did fold like a cheap suit, but you would not remember that based on the conversations in here. Here's some quote again from Hansard, November 29th, 2018, if any of you would like to check it out. And uh, the Premier said, all I've heard are these leaders get up and talk, 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 giving these poor people. I feel so sorry for them again because my phone has been ringing off the hook. And I think he was talking about giving them false hope. And he said, you know, I spoke to the CEOs of Ford Motor Company, Honda and Toyota. Everyone knows GM is leaving. Our job, rather than talking and giving people false hope, which is the worst thing you can do to a family, is to create opportunities. <laughs> create the environment by lowering gas prices. Wait a second. Lowering hydro rates. Anyway, um, but I digress. In answer to your question, I don't, I don't know. I can't forget. The folks in Response. Oshawa can't forget, and a lot of people were watching at the time. Um, I'm glad to see that they understand the importance of the automotive sector now. I'm glad that the Premier's learned that valuable lesson that it ain't over till it's over, um, and you should never count Oshawa out. Number four, Whitby. Well, thank you, uh, Speaker, for the opportunity to uh, ask a question. You know, Speaker, facts matter. For 15 long years, there was no investment in the region of Durham in long-term care. Two weeks ago, millions of dollars came into the region of Durham, millions of dollars in particular into the Oshawa riding in long-term care, millions of dollars in the education sector in the city of Oshawa, millions of dollars in terms of infrastructure. Speaker, the value of goods that was imported into Ontario from Michigan in December, according to Statistics Canada, was $2.2 billion. Does a member from Oshawa agree that protecting the jobs Question. and hard workers this represents is essential? Member for Oshawa to reply. Thank you, and I'm glad to, uh, I'm glad to answer directly the member from Whitby. Yes, I agree that protecting the workers in Oshawa and Durham region and across the province is, uh, is an important priority for all of us. Um, I would say we, we have to do it. Um, it's not just a should. 
The piece of legislation that we have before us is a part of that conversation. It's sort of a, a, a day late and a dollar short, but it is putting something into legislation. Um, there needs to be a lot more coming uh, when we're talking about protecting long-term. Thank you.